Here's the finished product of the slip cover that I will be showing you how to make. This is a very ugly chair with a really good looking dress on. We'll go through the whole process. But before you get started, you can go to howtoloveyourhome.com and go to the fabric guide. It's called Fabric Prospectus and click on it will show you how much fabric you're going to need. It has upholstery guide, slip cover guide for sofas, chairs, and ottoman. It actually has for drapes and, and just about anything you would need. So check it out at howtoloveyourhome.com and we'll go through the process. Let me show you what the chair began like. It's a sturdy chair but it is an ugly chair, but we have changed its life. I've draped the fabric over the chair, lined up the fabric to make it even, and I'm going to use paint tape to hold it on because it's a wood chair. I'm doing a slight dart right here, the dart being it's just a pinch in the fabric and fold it over at an angle. That'll be where I'll sew it. I'm doing this inside out so it's when it's pinned, we'll be able to go straight to the sewing machine and do what we have to do. It makes it easier to cope with. That's what I do every day. Smooth out the fabric to the back, and we shall start pinning first section. This chair is rounded, so we will go at that angle. We want it to be a little loose, but we also want it to fit. I normally run the pins facing um, to the left of where your seam will be. When you sew, this would be facing the inside of the sewing machine so your stitching is right here. Instead of having the bulk of the fabric on the right side, you need the small portion on the right side. Instead of using a ruler or some measuring thing, I usually use my fingers as my guide. Usually my index finger and my middle finger equals about one inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and begin cutting just under the lip of the seat is where I will cut. But I will give myself the two fingers width well, that was an unexpected client, but then again, I guess I expect everything here. You never know what could happen. I'm continuing to tape as I go and using the two fingers as markers to make my cuts. Giving myself a little bit extra space over here. I'm going to tape as I go. And you may be thinking to yourself, I wonder why she isn't cutting that fabric. Well, I'm pretty much a tightwad when it comes to fabric. So I only cut what I have to cut. I kind of act like a little bit of a miser doing it. So that way I'll have extra fabric in places I might need it. So lots of people cut it to size and have like a big pattern around it. I just go straight for it. Why cut twice when you can cut once? Hmm, doesn't sound like the term you would use for uh, wood. But here, you just cut once, taping as I go. It's going to want to pull up because of the weight of the fabric. Now, if I were using um, a fabric chair, I would be able to use pins along the way, but we don't have that benefit today. So probably thinking, man, she's a wacky cutter. Yes, I am. I 
just get in there and in the end I will surge it. I have a commercial serger and a commercial sewing machine. But if you have a regular sewing machine, then you can zigzag that so when you launder it, it won't fray when it's uh, run through the wash and the dryer. I got this at the um, hardware store. It's for mechanics where they put all the little things when they're working on cars and stuff. It's perfect for uh, pins. Um, I prefer to have a magnet close by instead of a pin cushion. That way I just don't have to mess with being exact at poking the pin cushion. I could just kind of grab a handful and go on my way. I've cut this piece. It goes below the lip and above the uh, little knobs at the top and I began pinning in the middle. Working my way out. Make sure you keep that design straight. And make sure you begin with it facing up. This will be the line that I use to make my seam. It's kind of a wonky style, so I'm going to create kind of a smooth curve from the center up to the knob. Oh my gosh, this is that song that was on the Cosby show when that little girl was singing this song. It was a funny show. I always listen to music while I'm working. On shuffle. You'll always get something different on Pandora. I'm going to come around the corner. I'm going to go straight. Um, I'll turn the chair around and show you what I'm doing see what's happening. I will be pinning on both sides, but that shouldn't be that big of a deal. You shouldn't run over your pins anyway. You should uh, take them out as you go. And sometimes they have to be underneath. Let me this around. The back piece I'm going to keep straight. So it will be a little bit loose on the back and the front will come down at the angle that we need. We have to be able to get the slip cover over the top of the chair because it's wider than the bottom. We will sew in the seam a tie on the back. As we go, you can see this is very loose. We want to be able to get it over the chair trim that in just a moment. And right above the, the lip of the seat, that's where I'll make my marks. And I'll use about three fingers, about an inch and a half. The spot where I will not sew because that's where I'll put my strap in the back make it tight. You really don't have to have a serger to do this. Zigzagging is just as good as serging if that's what you have. Well, what you have is what is good, right? So don't go out and buy new things for something like this. Do the best you can with what you've got. Teddy Roosevelt said that. And I'm still using the pins. So the seam is to the right. You can see how loose that is. And again, over here, using three fingers to pin that. Right above the seat. Three fingers make my mark. Where the tie will be, 
tighten up the back. Edie Burkell, who's on there now, it's our history lesson, um, went to SMU here in Dallas and had an art degree. She made some fabulous music. I'm trimming out the edge, clean it up a little bit, and I don't pin everything at once. I never have, and I probably never will. Uh, not lack of confidence, lack of making sure everything fits the way it's supposed to. So I sew and go. Once I pin this out, I'll sew this, and I'll sew this inside portion, and then the next process will be to go ahead and sew the skirt on. I always reverse the beginning of my seam. I don't run over pins. I'm kind of wild and crazy seamstress here, so I don't want to break any more needles than I have to. This is the place where I use my three fingers to measure. That is where I will be slipping in the, uh, the tie on the back a little later. I'm going to stay stitch that small space at the bottom. Bring my needle up. And follow my pins all the way around. Once we finish this, we'll be able to flip it right side out and see how it turned out. Seems a little loose on the back, but remember, we did that on purpose. So we want to be able to see. My pins are inside out and I'm just smoothing it out as I go where those pins are on the other side. Now, you, you know, I'm doing this in a quick fashion and you don't want to see me pinning and repinning all day, so I'm just kind of doing it this way to make things easy for you. You can make sure all your pins are running one way on a single side of the fabric, and you won't have to jack with this. There's so many different sewing levels that people have, but you have to kind of trust yourself, trust your instincts, and trial and error. I make 10 slip covers a week, do alterations, drapes, and um, the more you do it, the better you get. That's with anything. So I would suggest practicing as often as possible. A set of six sounds like a lot of good practice to me. Next time we get together, that will be, um, I imagine, slip covers 102. I will show you how to make a spot for the arms to come through in this lip cover. Um, there is usually have armchairs at the end of the table, and um, I'm going to need to know how to do that. That will involve some Velcro, which seems to be the easiest and the most hidden, not unless you're loving the button in the buttonhole. We are coming to the spot where the little strap is, where I measure with my fingers, at the bottom of the seat, and I'm going to stay stitch right here, make that half an inch, and let's see how this baby fits.